What is up, everyone? Welcome to French Bread's Dark Souls 3 lore run. I am French Bread, or Chris if you prefer. Um, in the in-between episodes, I was planning to do maybe a little bit of farming, get this great sword up to par, um, things of that nature, when guess who came knocking? And then I had no choice but to <laughs> start another episode. So, here we are. Um, in the interim, I did get this great sword to plus two. I have, I believe, the materials, maybe even the souls now, to get it to plus three. What? Yeah, I can just basically afford to get it to plus three. Let's see if I can. I cannot afford to infuse it, though. Um. Though looking at it, it's not—it's not amazingly worth it, but every little bit counts. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I revised my fashion once again. This time, though, not out of mere whimsy, but to uh, accommodate the immense weight of this weapon. Uh, if you want to take a look and see, this has this weighs 20 units. Um, even the other Ultra Great Sword I got, and I was considering, weighs only 15. The Great Axe, 16, and so on. This is definitely, has to be one of the heaviest weapons in the game. Um, I don't know if its damage really, truly reflects that as much as I'd like it to, but still, it's, it's very cool looking, so we'll roll with it for a while, see if we like it. Um, and first things first, before I do any bookkeeping, let's just go talk to Cirrus and make sure we have ourselves covered there. Hello again. I have since heard a great deal about you. For one, that you are most gentle of heart. I, too, am bound by duty, but can offer you my sign. I hear that cordial intrusion lays the path to embers. If I can be of help, by all means, do call upon me. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. Okay, so that's interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, the event that triggers Cirrus to show up at our shrine once again is acquiring the Dream Chaser's ashes and giving them to the Shrine Handmaid. And as soon as we do that, she shows up again, remarking upon our kindness, and she even uses that phrase, cordial, uh, cordial intrusion, uh, the same phrase that the Shrine Handmaiden used to try and sell us on the soapstone. So I have reason to believe that Cirrus was speaking with the Handmaid, and that... Perhaps those ashes had some, were of some importance and relevance to both the Handmaid and Cirrus. We'll have to wait before we get more details, but still very cool. Also, we got confirmation of Cirrus's past Dark Moon affiliation via the Dark Moon loyalty emote. As if it wasn't obvious enough, but there you go. If you should acquire assistance, use my sign. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. And it occurs to me, the first time we met Sirius, I made a note of pointing out her S-stock when referring to her as uh, being related to the Dark Moon Blades and possibly Gwendolyn. I didn't explain why, though. Um, I imagine most Souls veterans understand why, but for those who don't or have forgotten, um, the Dark Moon Nightess, a Firekeeper, in fact, from Dark Souls 1, was, in fact, also a member of the Dark Moon Blades and Servant of Gwendolyn. And the Dark Moon Nightess uh, used an Estoc herself that she would enchant with Dark Moon Blade, this miracle granted by. Uh, via loyalty to that covenant. But that is all she has for us for now, but it's very cool that we can summon her into a select few fights. So 
we're going to go over here, talk to Andre, and turn in that coal we found. Ah, well, it is good to what need. Well, well. What's the undead legion doing with a coal such as this? I'd heard one of the crystal sages had sided with Farron's abyss watchers. I suppose it must be true. You should know. This coal is imbued with magic. First one I've ever seen. Hardly a surprise, is it? I've never been one for books or wise men. <laughs> <laughs> a mostly accurate statement um, in Dark Souls 1 Andre wouldn't have anything to do with magic coals uh, you had to take that to oh dear what was his name he was a magic a magic smith uh, from Vinheim who resided near the entrance of New Londo uh, blanket on his name showing my cred here but he was the one who would enchant your weapon with magical means not Andre but they've consolidated for Dark Souls 3 let's also reinforce our Estus flask oh by the way if you flake with all right nothing new there pretty me I don't want to <laughs> and if I recall we also need to burn this bone shard after we do that, we'll have a quick item roundup. Alrighty, that leaves us with an Estus Flask plus three. Getting there. So, as far as regular items we picked up, we got the Rotten Pine Resin. Pine resin that has rotted and turned poisonous, likely rotten from the start. Temporarily applies poison to right hand weapon. Fair and keep was swallowed by the rotted wood, where blunt horned grooves concoct this resin. And as I stated in the last episode, yep, those those individuals are called grooves. Fun name to say, not a fun enemy to fight. We already checked out the poison gem, so nothing new to see here. Now we need to check out lightning bolt, or lightning spear. Miracle allegedly used by warriors of sunlight hurls a lightning spear. The spear inflicts lightning damage, providing an effective counter to fi or magic or fire. Especially powerful against metal armor and dragons. And, which is a basically series standard. We also collected the Great Axe from underneath the Stray Demon. Great Axe resembling a hunk of raw iron. If one possesses the inhuman strength required to lift the weapon, the great heft of its attacks will send foes flying. However, since every swing takes or makes use of one's entire body, attacks leave the wielder wide open to retaliation. So don't miss. Rotten Groove Spear. A crude, half rotten curved spear. Choice weapon of the blunt horned Grooves, descendants of the acolytes of Farron Keep. The rancid tip is drenched in rotten waste, making it acutely poisonous. Well, that's nice. It's <laughs> it doesn't surprise us at all that the Grooves are dipping their spears in shit kind of a very crudely effective and pragmatic way to go about things but descendants of the acolytes of Farron's keep so I guess that implies to me that not necessarily members of the undead legion but those who perhaps followed along with their caravan assisting in whatever ways they could mm -hmm. dragon crest shield a knight's shield engraved with a crest depicting a dragon. One of the enchanted blue shields. The dragon crest shield greatly reduces fire damage. So it does. Just as it was in Dark Souls 1. Did we get any new armor? 
Hmm. I don't believe... Don't believe we did this time. It does not appear to be the case. Nor did we attain any new rings or covenants. But what we can do is check out the descriptions on some new items that have gone up for sale. Oh. <laughs> Even though we are too poor at the moment to buy any of them. This is a very important one, though. Hidden Blessing. Holy water, blessed by the Queen of Lothric, fully restores FP. There is a grave in Lothric that sees no visitors, a dark place where rootless warriors rest. The Queen of Lothric alone cared to wish the poor souls good fortune. So, another reference to the Queen of Lothric and the fact that she alone was... Uh, favorable towards the souls in that area. Um, it's a little vague, but as we get closer to that point, as we reach that point, um, we're going to see more of possibly the motivation there. Black Bug Pellet. Medicinal pellet made from crushed insects. The black type temporarily boosts dark damage absorption. At all times, the Abyss Watchers of the Undead Legion kept a supply of these concoctions, prepared by the Acolytes. Rumor has it that their Gru descendants still make these concoctions, and apparently they do. Purple Moss Clump. Poison can be exasperating, so be sure to carry sufficient moss clumps when traveling a blighted area. Now I believe we also have a handful of the blooming purple moss clump which uh, is able to cure toxin the more severe form of poison moss clumps without blossoms are useless against toxin and those who neglect to carry this flowered variety are simply courting an early demise so the game's saying we have no one else to blame but ourselves for the rotten poison traps the game set up I know, I know. Fair's fair. She also sells the infinite supply of Titanite shards now. Usually, the case with the Firekeeper is she'll start selling a good supply of items once it's no longer as helpful as it once would have been. And, I, yeah, we have some new, new gear here. But there's not much to say about it. It's just the leather armor that was the... Starting armor of the Hunter, I believe, in Dark Souls 1. Um, somewhat more famously associated with the archer within Darkroot Garden, the one wearing the Ferris hat. I think Dark Souls 2 implied that that person was eventually raised up into deific status as Evlana, Goddess of the Hunt. That all sounds like hearsay to me, though. Well, she has a life ring now as well, but there's not much to say about it. A generation's old ring set with a small red jewel raises maximum HP. Let's see if I can... Can I see what the amount is? No, unfortunately not. Rings have unique powers, and their discovery will do much to ease a wearisome journey. Okie dokie. Ashen one. That's what she's got for us for now. And I do believe... That's all the new all the new stuff we'll be getting out of this shrine. He's still gonna be talking about Gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just curious. Okay, it looks like Yuria now has indeed finally departed. So that is that as far as she's concerned. We need to focus on Moving uh, deeper through the fair and keep, put out more of these flames. Alrighty, I gotta make a mental note to save about 5.5 thousand souls so that I can infuse this sucker with a strength. 
uh, infusion as soon as possible. Yay, poison. I'm going to try and augment our damage here. 348 with magic weapon. One shot these guys. But oh my, what do we have going on over there? He's already seen us, the bastard. To make matters worse, we're slow rolling. There we go. Here to help us out in our time of need is the friendly tower giant. Just bringing down the thunder. We'll let him do his work since he's a he's a good worker, but he's a little loud. Man, that's crazy. Can we even see his tower from here? Is he just arcing his shots over the mountain? I, I don't know. To figure that out later. We got a ring for our troubles there. I mean, now we have the luxury to pick up all the items here at our leisure. The usual assortment of branches, but also crown of dusk. Ember for ourselves. Most of these items, not very helpful. Like I said, it's a classic FromSoft troll to put a bunch of vaguely useless to completely useless items in a dangerous area. Try and make you gather them all, killed in the process. We don't like it. Alright, we're free. Free of that, po that at least. Out of stamina there. This guy really wants to kill us. No such luck. Alright. The danger here taken care of. Holy crap. Looks like all the um mushroom bros from Dark Souls 1 have not made the transition sort of old rotted and thoroughly dead these were a, kind of a cool enemy from Dark Souls 1 that had more strength than their appearance implied they've whatever was left of them have met their end here and it looks like the body of Body of somebody is crouched by the side of this one, almost in a mournful stance. And that's where we get the Sage's Scroll. I want to find out about that right away. Sage's Scroll. Scroll containing sorceries of the Crystal Sages. Give to a sorcerer to learn sorceries of the Sages. As any sorcerer knows, sorcery is a talent and these sorceries were refined to nurture a very special talent. Well, it doesn't really give us any clue as to who this body might belong to. Um, but, hey, at least we found a scroll with which to uh, appease Orbeck with. Before we can worry about that, we have this <laughs> terrible situation to deal with. Three of these guys all together. Let's see, I think we can 
pull them all individually though. Give ourselves a slightly easier time of it. Alright, let's back up. The maximum range here. And these guys are, you guessed it, irritating enemy. Precisely because of this attack. Get out, gotta get out. Oof. I was just gonna congratulate myself on dodging. But you saw it happen. There we go. First one down. Only took us two Estes, I think. <laughs> ah, we got his attention. Man, that attack is annoying. Want to be careful with this guy. So you don't get caught in that Wrath of God style attack he has. I believe it's this one. Pulls it back out. Got him. Black Bow of Ferris. Get all our FP back there. Alright, buddy. It's just you. All your friends have gone. Oh, shit. <laughs> He doesn't need friends. <laughs> oh, thank you, Hitbox. Whew, and a Ferris hat. What were they guarding? A miserable poison gem. Ah oh, well, the real treasure is what they had on them, I suppose. Now, this landmass here, as you might be able to guess from the bridge, is for the flame we have already put out. So we've, by heading this way, we've looped around to the path that we had been kind of moving down originally. If that makes any sense. Uh -oh. More Tainai, please. It's not useless to me yet. And then right there we have the bonfire. It leads us down. And this is the pillar we climb up to... Uh, we climbed up to reach the old wolf. Wolf! God! I don't know why I'm so bad at that. I must be a fool. Up here? That's the soup. I wonder if a certain someone's been through. And a sunlight talisman. Wolf's blood sword grass. We're going to have an interesting roundup today. Well, it should happen today. Unless I don't go too... Go into, don't go too overlong. Yeah, so we've explored... That tower there. We've got stuff to check out this way. As you may or may not be able to tell, um, the... Swamp is a rather confusing place because it's just so huge and uh, not the easiest thing in the world to keep track of your position in. Uh, somewhere around there, maybe just past it. Yeah, see where those torches are? That's the door leading to... Um, the area with the Abyss Watchers, so if you kept going that way, we'd get to the Crab Zone and we'd be looping around again. So I have, our, I have my bearings somewhat, which means everything in this direction we haven't had a chance to explore yet. Better. Or worse. Probably worse. Nameless Night Set. 
I can tell you right now there's no particular lore in that at all, but it, that it is the... Oh, shit. I, um... wasn't expecting to get invaded by Yellowfinger here. I knew that time was coming, but... I thought it would be in a very different direction. We don't see... Hazel on the prowl anywhere. So I'm going to... I'm going to move in the direction that I know Hazel typically shows up at. Nope, I've changed my mind because of details I just remembered. <laughs> we're going to head this way. And we're going to hope Hazel doesn't make our life miserable. Because she could definitely get us killed in fighting one of these things. Dodge. Uh oh. Uh, we'll take the damage. If it gets rid of this thing. Yeah, I think Hazel invaded in a location farther away than even she intended. She doesn't know how to get to us. Which is to our advantage, because we didn't want to deal with her. While dealing with these pieces of shit! Oh fuck! Now we're getting in danger of having to deal with Hazel. As well as any local Gru that are prowling. Oh boy. Oh boy. We need to move. Move, we need to chug. Stop that. It's gonna get me, but you know what? I'm gonna get you first. What an ass. Oh man, that puts us <laughs> puts us straight out of healing. So anything we deal with now. We're gonna have to deal with this sorry state. Actually eat some purple moss just so we don't bleed anymore. Any more life. There she is. No, no, please. Keep locking. Hyper armor! No! <laughs> You're out now. See ya. <laughs> that was a dangerous, dangerous situation. I'm happy with myself for getting through it. Let's put out this light. Actually, before we do, we mentioned this in the last episode. Four kingly figures. Possibly a reference to the four kings. They didn't have a proper Lord Soul all to their own. They shared theirs with Gwyn, but you never know. One more flame needed in order to gain admittance. As Hawkwood put it for us. Dear Hawkwood. This piece of shit. Uh, this is, this, watch, this is the guy that actually gets me. Let's just go all in. All-in strategy worked. 
I don't really want to go any farther in this direction with us sitting at zero Estes. So I think I am going to use a homeward, homeward, homeward bone to get back to our last location. Actually, I'm going to do better than that and go back to Firelink Shrine so we can see about infusing our great sword here. Maybe get a little bit of extra use out of it. Just a few more points of damage, whatever we can get. Ah, tis good, wasn't he? All right, let's see. What is it? What is it right now? Two seven three. Ah, tis what? Uh, let's see. That would be 280 something, so that'd be a little bit better. And raw is just 263. So I'm going to go with the heavy infusion, make a heavy greatsword. It is heavy, so there you go. Follows. Pretty like that. Yeah, 288. Just a little bit more damage for us. Let's see. We have 1,300 souls to work with. 13,000. Heh, 1,300 wouldn't do shit, would it? Um, we, have, we have enough to level up. What would we level up if we could... Doot, 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 doot. I would level up Vigor. And I am not Welcome particularly home. saving up for anything at the moment, Never so let's do that. We also level up our vitality. Make the burden on ourselves a little bit less severe, but no, let's go. Let's go Vigor first. Farewell, Ashley. Having low vigor while you're trying to trade hits with a big old sword like this isn't a great idea. And we're scraping by. So, let me think. Let's go back to the Fear and Keep bonfire. Because the main thing... Sorry about that. The main thing... Uh, the main area left for us to investigate, besides, yes, that tower over there, is the path uh, from this side. And, in case you were curious, that flame right there, that's where we just were when we were attacked by the large Gru creature. We ran up, fought Hazel over in that direction. Let's see, can I get away? I can get away with a Thrall Axe. Excellent. But we have a lot of deep muck to get through. And I don't want to fat roll through all that. I put it in the wrong place. Sweet. I guess I'll have to go two handed to get this active. Iron Flesh. Pyromancy. We'll look at it later. Right now we're in the danger zone. I think I might level up this little axe, actually. Axes suit our character, even if this one is not very large. As you can see, we've got a... a very bad situation incoming. I knew this person would be coming after us somewhere, I just didn't know exactly exactly where dark hand some kind of claw weapon Ooh, this might be rough and I'm not talking shit this might be rough I I fought this phantom in a different location before uh, 
not in the swamp though, but in the, even in the other location they were pretty pretty rough stuff and I know for a fact ah you bastard look at all those poison knives he's throwing out knock yourself out <laughs> I know for a fact that those claws uh, have the quick step ability as well like I said knock yourself out scumbag Out to that hyper armor. Whew! Nearly killed us with that, though, huh? Mannequin claws. Dark spirit, pale shade of Londor. So-called assassins we've heard about in the past, perhaps. Most likely. Mannequin claws. Weapons of the pale shades. Assassins of the Sable Church of Londor. The curved blades, or curved claws, sorry, cause heavy bleeding. When two-handed, claws are equipped to each hand. Sorry, taking a sip of tea there. Oh, my voice. Um, so yeah, it would appear that it was not an amicable parting we had with Yuria. And now she's got assassins after us because she's pissed. I didn't mention it at the time, but she actually sounded relatively uh, mournful, actually, when she described us as a fleeting lord. Lost opportunity, perhaps. Like I said, I don't think I don't think the people of Londo are necessarily <laughs> Londo. Londo are necessarily good people. Um, but I do think they're passionate about their cause. Tricky bastard. The thing about Basilis is they don't, they're never going to actually damage your HP, so I need to get my essence out. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I got very close to being cursed there, and we've already seen this playthrough what that looks like. Yeah, this axe, completely unupgraded, is not terrible. Kinda digging. That's a terrible place to die, my friend. And up there is the flame we just put out. Frog hop over here. Yes. Got ourselves an item. More nameless soldiers. Wonder what they fought for. Cheeky. So cheeky. <laughs> Just out of my range. Yeah, why don't you try a leaving attack, punk? There you go. Easily done, right? <laughs> Got a few more. Well, more than a few more, actually. Maybe if we... Nope, we don't have that equipped right now. We are in danger town. We are in danger town. Oh, we're fucked. <laughs> we're straight up fucked. Ah, the little bastard's collision kept me from getting away. All right, fair enough. Take a different tact. Since we had already basically emerged on the other side, we're going to approach it from the other side. It'll be a less arduous journey for us that way. But, 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 do we have enough? 
we will swap out our Estus ring. We're ring of sacrifice until we pick up, I don't even know, however many souls it was we had there. Probably wasn't that many, to be honest, but even so. Uh, let's see. That's just us to soup. That's not an item, so we don't have to worry about that too much. We do have to worry about this a little bit. Come on, asshole. Deal with you now rather than deal with you later. Come on. Yeah. You fire those off into a tree. You're done. You're done. Get out of here. Alrighty. And you might be able to recognize this is indeed the area where we just got taken out. Oh, I hate him so much. I hate all these guys. Truth be told. But one two. Deny me a quick kill. I hate the most. There we go. We have a little bit better time of it. This go around. Repair powder. Souls retrieved. Is this guy coming after me too? Yes, he is. Well, hope it hope it turned out the way you dreamed it would. Okay. At this point, we've pretty much explored everything in the Fear and Keep area except for that final flame. So I'm going to hit this cave, and then I think I'm going to try and hit that flame real quick. Then we'll call it an episode there. Before I do, this is a very important cave. Perhaps the final resting uh, place of a very... a pair very important NPCs. Can see a pair of eyes there. I do believe this is intended to be Elizabeth, the uh, mushroom mentor and caretaker of Dusk. Here, a golden scroll. antiquated set. Uh, this is what Dusk wore in Dark Souls 1. So I'm feeling like the spotty is Dusk of Ulysses. Um, she deserved to die in a better place than this. But such, such is the way of things in the world of Dark Souls. Anybody who deserved better doesn't really doesn't really get it. Now, where might that last flame be? Let's use the let's use the geography, the environment to help us get an idea of where that other flame is. Because these woods. Get right in the way. Ah, okay, there it is. We just have to head directly over there. We should be able to reach it in a decent amount of time. Especially if we use our trusty hand axe, or thrall axe. Sincerest apologies. <laughs> I really don't want to deal with that big guy, though. I don't want to deal with these guys either. Now that I've aggroed more than a few, I super don't want to deal with them. Ah yes, this was the original one that we kind of stepped around. So 
tell me y'all how far do you really want to follow me? Let's ascend the stairs. Gotta, gotta love the uh, the hyper armor we get on this weapon once the swing is in motion. Nope, you get nothing, my friend. Yeah, I've never been a big strength weapon admirer, but uh, oh, I have to say, I need to heal. <laughs> Thanks for being so compliant. I have to say I've been enjoying them a decent amount. Yeah, we know. So on this one... We have what looks to be a woman and a tree-like object behind her. I'm thinking the Witch of Izalith. So we gain admittance to the Undead Legion. Well, somehow or another we made it through. In the next episode, we'll be doing a, I think a somewhat lengthy item roundup as we go through everything we've picked up in the swamp so far. And then we're going to see about possibly paying a visit to some Lords of Cinder. The first we'll have encountered so far in our lengthy journey. I hope you all enjoyed and are looking forward to uh, coming back for the next episode. Till then, I'm going to bid you adieu and sign off. See you later, everyone.